Hey, what's up, guys? This is Foryam again, back with a new Minecraft Dungeons video. In the past days, if not weeks, I've been farming the Asian hunts for quite some time every single day. Of course, to get my hands on the best gilded items which you can get your hands on in Minecraft Dungeons, but this can be a very long journey if you're doing things wrong, if you're messing things up with, for example, the Pigling Merchant, or maybe you're doing things wrong with the runes. In this video, I'm going to explain everything you need to know about the Asian hunts, how you'll be able to run them as fast and efficiently as possible, get the best out of of every single hunt and of course also re-roll the piglin merchant every now and then so you will have a higher chance of finding those gilded items. Guys, today I show all the information I know to date so let's get right to it. Let's farm some gilded items. Alright, so once again in front of the ancient hunt portal. Boy, oh boy, I used this one so many times in the past days. You have no idea. I lost so many gold bars. I lost so many levels. Currently on level 165. I think we started above 400. Anyways, there are so many things that could make it as efficient and fun as possible. So let's cover them right away. So, first off, guys, very important. If you want to farm for a certain item, of course, you're going to look it up in a loot table. Guys, seriously, if you don't know what it is, there is a Google sheet that will allow you to find every single ancient mob with their respective loot table so you know exactly what you can farm with which ancient mob. So, in order, of course, to summon these bad boys, you're going to have to activate the altar and you're going to have to make some offerings. And for that, my friends, I definitely recommend you to farm enough items so you can make these offerings multiple times. For example, for my offering for a armored skeleton to get my hands on a unique soul bow like the Bow of the Lost Souls, which I'm currently farming for, I need regular soul bows and these have this A icon, unique for Ryan's have the A L and um, yes, you pretty much get the point. Right now I need to have sacrifice the A and I also have to sacrifice this trident or H icon pretty much. I'm gonna have to uh, sacrifice two of those actually, so let's search for an artifact right here as well. Actually, I've got this one even better. This has both the A and the H, so we're gonna sacrifice this guy. Then we can actually withdraw this one. So right now we have uh, two times the H and one time the A, so that will make a barrage or armor skeleton pop up. So right now, of course, we only have three enchantment points which we can spend, so it will not have a very high chance of spawning as well as the rate. So um, we want to crank this up to the maximum. Really, guys, you don't want to save points on this. You want to go as high as possible. You're gonna lose many enchantment points anyways and of course you want to make your rates as good as possible as well because you're already sacrificing a great deal of your items it really doesn't matter you just want to maximize your chances of finding the exact item you were hunting for so right now we have 92 percent and 2.3 on average sometimes i even find three to five of these ancient mobs which is very awesome so right now we can confirm this Next up, we have the Ancient Hunt difficulty. I always recommend you guys to put this on the highest possible because the Gilded Enchantment, the built-in enchantment which you're going to find on that Gilded item is always going to be determined based on your difficulty. So if it's on Apocalypse Level 7 plus 25, you will have a much higher chance of finding a Tier 3 enchantment. So of course, if you're farming for your God Roll enchantment item, well, you're going to have to go for the highest difficulty as well. And guys, seriously, don't worry about it. If if you have some issues with this difficulty, if you have problems getting through, just check out the top right of the screen. I'm sharing my build right there, which will allow you to pretty much snowball through this one, allow you to take down mobs pretty easily, even one hit kill those ancient mobs for the very quick loot. So definitely make sure to check it out. Anyways, we're going to start this one on the highest difficulty. So um, we will have a highest chance of finding the best items. Okay, so it looks like we're gonna start on the Soul Sand Valley. This is not one of my favorite levels, but that's cool. Uh, right now, we're just gonna open up the map overlay. And this is already a very awesome thing to look for, guys. When you're searching for ancient hunts on the map, let's just uh, walk to this location so you can see the overlay a little bit easier. Actually, when we open up the full map, you can also see it like that. So right now, we have 12 chests. So that means we'll be able to find many of those golden chests, which is pretty awesome. And at the same time, we have an average of, let's say, 24 
uh, ancient mobs, but I think they're gonna be way more in this level. About at least three, I think. Anyways, if you see these rounded edges, especially towards the southwest or to the southeast, both these directions will never have an ancient mob location or a gold uh, vault, let's say. You always want to have rooms that focus to the northeast, or I mean, sorry, the northwest and the northeast, because only there we will be able to generate those rooms. Remember the secret obsidian chest room of the desert temple? Well, if this one generates towards the southeast, well, of course, you will never be able to enter it. So that also means there is simply not going to be an entrance. Well, exactly the same rule applies for both the gold faults and, of course, also the ancient mob rooms. Anyways, we're always fighting with our overlay active, guys. So we will always be able to see every single treasure on the map. I even recommend you to pick up these um, wooden chests because, of course, uh, they will have some extra emeralds, but it is not fantastic stuff. So a little bit further in the level, actually pretty early still, we already found our very first room. We have a small chance of finding uh, the ancient mob rooms and, of course, also the gold vaults. So if we have a look at the map right here, of course, you will be able to tell that we will have a chance of finding more rooms in these parts. But, of course, when the rooms generate towards the southeast or the southwest, like these three, well, they will never have a room in there. Sometimes you can find chests, but really, if they are located far outside of the map, they are definitely not worth checking out. So then you also will be able to find some on these parts, but um, we will discuss cover this area a little bit later. So we're first going to check out this one and this is already our first ancient mob room. So if you're playing with my build guys, all you have to do is one roll with your dynamo. Just click the button, activate your torment quiver and you will be able to one hit kill that mob without a problem. Of course, for experience and to stack up some more souls, you'll be able to kill these guys easily to get your hands on more of those. But really, you can just ignore the rest as they will not drop anything of use or valuable really. So we just arrived at the next location and look at that. This is already our second room, this time a golden vault. I always recommend you guys to just do one roll and then just shoot your torment quiver right to the front of the bridge. So you can pretty much kill every single mob out there. Of course, if they're enchanted, this is going to be even more fun to do. So we just got our hands on about uh, five or six gold bars. Nothing too fancy, but this is already a pretty decent amount because if you found like five or six of these rooms, well, you will be able to stack up quite some gold. So we just found a pretty large room and this one has a round shape of the map. This usually also indicates that there are no secret rooms, no ancient mob locations pretty much. So then we can just move on. Once again, opening up my map overlay, as you can see, these parts will never have a room, only sometimes a chest. And of course, the shadow brews are really awesome to just sneak past enemy mobs. I think this is a very nice thing to do because really you don't want to waste much time searching for those rooms. So right now we know that we can just pretty much skip this entire part because these are facing towards the wrong direction and uh, we can have a shot at this place but um, as you can see this is a gate event so I'm not really sure if you're interested in that it only gives you just a couple of emeralds I think they are definitely not worth checking out. So we just found the exit and if we quickly open up the map, of course, you'll be able to tell that these uh, rooms are also faced towards the southwest, so no obsidian rooms. Our next area is the Crimson Forest. And really, guys, when we open up the map right here, you can already tell at the very start that this room, this room, this room, and also this room, they're all not going to be interesting. And also including this one, it has a pretty round edge to it. And uh, you can also tell it by the map generation, guys, the terrain. You can already see that uh, you have many gaps of thin air right here. So it pretty much means you won't be able to find anything. However, if we look at this part, uh, you can see some pretty funky straight edges. So that means these are walls. So um, there's going to be some kind of structure. So that means right there and also right there, we will be able to find another room. You can already tell it by the structure we see right there. And the first room, of course, is not going to have any um, entrance, but maybe the second one is going to have. And look at that. We actually have more of those a little bit further away. So this one is also empty, unfortunately, and that one too. Wow, this is pretty disappointing. And um, of course, as you can see right here, uh, the map already ends there. So uh, that means no ancient mob room locations or vaults in these parts. My objective asks me to go to the southwest, but of course, I want to check out every single location on the map because you might be able to find more of these rooms on another location. And look at that. There it is. 
Once again, we found an ancient mob location, so uh, let's just perform one roll, activate the button, and one hit kill him. One hit killed this skeleton horseman as well. So we already found the exit, guys. But that doesn't mean we want to exit the level. I think we have so many more rooms which we can check out. For example, right there, guys. Let's open up the real map. So this one will have a chance of containing a room as well as that one right there. And maybe we will be able to discover more on these parts. If you have, like, very big packs of mobs chasing you down, you just roll once again and bam. You can just annihilate one after the other without a problem. All right, I think this is going to be our very final possible room location. Once again, guys, Torment Quiver, if you have big packs of mobs, just shoot it. And I think if you have a chance for multi-shot, of course, it will allow you to take him down without a problem. And look at that. We got rewarded with one final ancient mob room. Bam! Nocturnal Bow. Nice. Finally, you're unique, guys. And this, my friend, is actually a pretty decent one. Steals movement speed, also the burst bowstring cooldown shot combo, which allows you to, of course, constantly have your artifacts on cooldown. But unfortunately, we don't have the dynamo, which is going to be one of the best ones to get your hands on, because then you will be able to one-hit kill all those mobs. Our final room is the spider cave. And guys, seriously, the spider cave doesn't contain many of these rooms, but sometimes you might get lucky, but I usually find them at the very end of the level. So what I usually do on maps like these, well, I just run to the end and then I'll just check if there is something interesting. But um, right now it's really not worth it to fight every single mob and take my time to explore these parts because as you can see from the edges of the map, you can tell that there is not really going to be anything special. So right here we have some room generation towards the southeast, but of course they also have borders to the northeast, so that means we will be able to, of course, find some more rooms. But um, this is going to be the only one in right these parts. And guys, seriously, be careful with the Wither Skeletons, as they will deal so much percentage damage. Even against uh, the overpowered Life Boost glitch, these guys are pretty scary. And there we have it, just some more gold. In total, four bars. Not too much, but really every single gold bar counts towards your total. So I usually skip mobs until I can't really, for example, these guys are pretty tricky to run away from as well as the Isolager. So I always take them down from afar with my uh, Torment Quiver. And then, well, these guys, of course, they will always teleport off to you. So I think it's also wise to destroy them. So I think this is going to be the end of our entire ancient hunt. So we're going to escape the scary spider cave. Look at that. The exit is right there. And guys, before you exit the map, definitely make sure to double check if you didn't skip any rooms. So we got our hands on 9 of the 12 chests, we probably skipped some of those wooden ones, but they really don't make the difference. So here we go, 75% of the chest opened, 62% of the mobs defeated, so not that much, but really guys, the more mobs you defeat, the more time it will take as well. At the end of the level, you also get your hands on 10 of these gold bars. So guys, if you only have one more life left, just play extra careful because not only the 10 gold bars will be added to your account, but this will also refresh the Piglin Merchant every single time. Guys, seriously, the Piglin Merchant is a very awesome second way to get your hands on Gilded items. Of course, they won't always be the ones that you're looking after, but seriously, the first restocks are so cheap. So we currently have 360 gold bars, but the first restock is just 10 gold bars. Then we can already get our hands on a uh, unique Gilded right there. This one is actually not fantastic. It does have the Burst Bowstring Tempo Theft. Third one is bad, though. Second restock is just 20 as well, and I also restock with a 40. I mean, in total, this will cost us 70 gold bars but look at that we actually got our hands on a pretty cool new unique right there too bad the enchantments are horrible but hey sometimes the piglin merchant can definitely sell you very interesting wares when we have a look at my armor right here, guys, I actually managed to find quite some pretty cool stuff. For example, the stalwart armor with a tier 3 chilling, also uh, the lightning focus, the cooldown, then also the cowardice or the final shout. This was from the Piglin Merchant, and you will be able to find many more awesome stuff right there. For example, this Soul Dancer rope with reduced artifact cooldown, uh, the Bag of Souls, uh, I don't know. You can do some pretty interesting stuff with these items, especially if they have the poison or lightning focus. These elemental focus items items are really awesome for some new experimental builds. I'm going to quickly start another ancient hunt so I'll be able to show you guys which levels are definitely not interesting to focus on because they will simply waste your time searching for those rooms.
So once again, we completed the Ancient Hunts and refreshed the Piglin Merchant, so always worth checking back on him straight away. Shoots two enemies at once, Burst Bowstring, Dynamo, Tempo Theft. Not that bad, but there are really greater things. But also, I definitely recommend you guys checking the other ones because sometimes you will be able to find a very awesome rare item, so it doesn't always have to be a unique one. And guys, of course, if you find weak items, I just recommend you to get rid of them right off the bat because, of course, they give you the gold bars and you really don't want to sit on them. Sometimes I read comments that people are asking me, how many gilded items do you have? Well, this is currently what I have. These are pretty interesting, uh, pretty much worth uh, keeping my hands on, but most of them really are trash. So I only suggest you guys to keep the items which have like the best enchantment combos because, yeah, they are just gilded, guys. And just like finding a better unique if you find something bad just get rid of it and guys the reason why i actually ran the asian hunt for a second time is because i wanted to show you guys some levels which aren't as interesting to run on one of them we already showcased, which is the spider cave. Usually you find those gates at the very end. But then we also have the woodland mansion and also the basalt deltas. Guys, seriously, I think the basalt deltas is the worst out of there. I haven't found a single Asian mob room right there. Sometimes those with the, the gold bars, but that is pretty much it. Those levels are huge. So I think you just want to go straight to the end of that one. Get into the portal and find your ancient mobs on the second and on the third room because, of course, they will have a much higher chance of popping up right there. Sometimes you don't find anything and, of course, that is not really nice. But seriously, guys, don't waste your time searching for rooms desperately because it's going to be way more efficient to just reset the level. I mean, just to end the level so you can get your hands on that bonus of 10 gold bars and, of course, also visit the Piglin Merchant once again. You will just refresh it way quicker, way more efficiently, so then you can go for a more efficient and nicer run next time. It really is not worth it to search for things that aren't there or are very far tucked away in the level, which is only going to take more of your time. So there you have it guys, a more advanced way on how to get through those ancient hunts as fast and efficient as possible to get your hands on those best gilded items. I already showcased my build which I'm using for the ancient hunts, so if you missed it out definitely make sure to check out the description, it's going to be linked right there, as well as the video which leads to the ancient hunt loot table, pretty much the spreadsheet where you can find all the items. Of course it's definitely worth mentioning that these are always the common and rare varieties listed in the ancient hunt spreadsheet some people were saying like hey the fighter's bindings is missing right there it's just the gauntlets guys so look after the common and rare for Ryan's. if you have more questions guys about the asian hunts and other things just leave it in the comments down below i always love to help you guys with more informative videos anyways if you enjoyed watching this video it would be very much appreciated if you could just hit that like button for a second and of course if you're new to the channel make sure to subscribe because there is so much more coming your way i'm currently working on many different builds many more guides and of course also about some new interesting things a new format which i'm gonna post very soon and of course guys make sure to check out my discord we are training and teaming up together with many people from the minecraft dungeons community right there guys right now it is 4 am out so i'll see you guys very soon good luck hunting for your favorite gilded items guys till next time peace